I've heard a bunch of stuff about having a good work-life balance. Uh, you know, how much you work, how much you play, how much time you spend with people you love, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, but l let me just toss this out there. Balance doesn't mean 50%. Balance could be 99% to 1% or 1% to 99% or anywhere between. Or, you know, I guess for some people, a good balance could be 100%. Balance isn't really a very good word, is it, when we're thinking about this kind of thing? So it, here's the, the, the popular narrative is, if you work too hard, you're going to burn out. And the government was kind enough to do research and find out that the perfect number of hours to work is 40 hours a week. And that's what the narrative is that everybody has done for many years, and that's what's right. Except now it's really tough on millennials to put in that many hours because they want to spend more time discovering themselves and buying um, uh, onesies. Now, I don't know. I don't really care how much you work, but I, I'm going to suggest that 40 hours a week is not a good balance of work if you want to achieve a bunch, if you want to be excellent. If you want to play in the NBA and you're 13 years old, no, you can't just practice a little bit and then have a good balance of time spent with your friends doing other things. No, you've got to bust it. Do some push-ups, do some jumping, do some basketball practice, like put in a bunch of hours every day if you're going to be excellent at it. Same thing for a business person. I don't think any successful business person who started with, you know, less than 50 grand to get their thing going and has worked really hard and five or 10 years later has a net worth of uh, 10 million. That person did not have a good work-life balance, according to the folks who think you should only work 40 hours a week. Those folks have been working 80 to 120 hours a week, year after year after year. That's what gets stuff done in the world, is hard work, weighing the balance, balancing it more toward work at times for years on end. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that. You might want to say, um, let's say just work 10 hours a week and live in your parents' basement and collect uh, unemployment uh, welfare from the government or um, workers' compensation welfare or something like that, live in government housing, all that kind of stuff, you can get away with that in some societies at some points in history. But if you really, truly want to succeed and be great, be at the top of the game in something, better than most people that are, who are competing with you in the same game, if you want that to happen, you got to work. Now, I'm going to kind of change gears a little bit and go back to my old friend Karen. She was just brilliant in, in thinking of a human body like a machine. And if we knew where we were going to go out on a, a nice long mountain bike ride and really hit it hard up in the high elevations, well, we'd eat a lot of pasta beforehand. And it, it, she thought of our bodies as machines. And you've got to feed them with the proper stuff in order to achieve what it is you want to achieve. And if you're going camping for a bunch of days, you don't start out by eating a bunch of steak before you go. And there are just a lot of little things like that that make good sense. Same things goes with burning yourself out. Yeah, sometimes humans, most humans seem to need a break. Uh, you need to take a little downtime. So I'm not opposed to that. I'm not opposed to taking a nap in the middle of the day sometimes if you feel you need that to recharge. Like I do that. A lot of successful people do that. However, you don't deserve that. You don't deserve great success unless you're putting in great effort. And if you want to achieve more than 20% of other folks are achieving, then you're not going to do it by producing the same amount that they produce. You're going to have to produce way more than they do. So don't really fall for this whole work-life balance nonsense. Even though if we really take the words apart, there is some truth to making sure you're designing your life to bring you ultimate happiness. And if ultimate happiness is spending the next 30 or 40 years working for someone else and only having to do it for 40 or 50 hours a week and then being able to spend all the rest of the time with friends, family, camping, boating, if that's what you want and that's your goal, then you certainly are going to take a different track. But if you want to be the person who reinvents electric cars and takes people to Mars, if you want to be the person who takes over the international health system uh, to make a ton of money like Gates did, or if you want to be somebody who's really achieves a lot, 
you've got to put in a lot of years of hard work in order to reach the top of whatever game it is you want to do. Thanks so much for listening. This is kind of, as you can tell, uh, this has been one of the make your life better segments, not so much philosophy, but more of just a life coaching, little bit of advice. The, the junk I've learned over the last almost 50 years, uh, hopefully it helps you.